Hey guys, it's Alex from 7th Hour Films, back again with My Hero Academia. Last time on My Hero Academia, we had Class 1A. Continuing on in the provisional licensing exam, we had uh, Todoroki uh, landed victory uh, against the color-coordinated ninjas and passed the exam. Uh, we then cut over to uh, a group of Class 1A students, Yaoyorozu, Jiro, Asui, and Shoji, who were cornered by uh, a bunch of... Uh, posh girls, and one of them was like a super intelligent one who thought that she had beaten them, but uh, through uh, teamwork and other smarts, I guess, mainly teamwork, uh, class, uh, the group was able to overcome the posh girls. Um, let's see. Meanwhile, uh, Midoriya and Midoriya, Uraraka, and Saro were getting ready to take on some opponents so that they could pass. And uh, Bakugo, Kirishima, and Kaminari were confronted by someone else from Shiketsu. Um, and he turned Kirishima into meat. And then we got a cool speech from Aizawa about how fucking amazing Class 1A is. And that was basically that. Um, yeah. This is where I say no spoilers in the comments whatsoever. And uh, also, if you want to watch my reaction to this episode of My Hero Academia, what you got to do is head down in the description or to the pinned comment. Click on the link there. You can watch the reaction there. Hopefully have a good time. When you're done with that, you can pop right back over here for the discussion. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get right into this episode of My Hero Academia. Here we go. Alrighty, folks, that's episode 18. We have passed the first round of the provisional licensing exam. And all of Class 1A actually passed. I'm proud of them, man. Oh, I'm glad they did it, man. Because I honestly thought we would lose some people in this, but no. Now, I don't know, we don't know how we're going to be graded on uh, round 2, but... I'll be very curious to see if anyone actually fails now. Holy Toledo. So many things happened, man. So many different things happened. Maybe the biggest one of all, Bakugo has now figured out that Deku, that Deku got his power from All Might. He's figured it out. And honestly, yeah. It makes sense that he did, because in season one, Midoriya admitted that it was a borrowed power, and now Bakugo has put two and two and two together and realized that he got his power from All Might. That, oh, that, that could lead to some trouble. And again, you know, they said, what, what are you doing? Oh, is it time for you to get up? Apparently Darby's waking up. It's about 3 o'clock. This is about when he does that, but... I'm still working here, you know? Can you relax? Can you just, like, wait while I talk about stuff? Nope. There he goes. So, I'm probably going to have to let him out, so uh, I'll just be a sec. Alright, I'm back. You know, the good thing is he's starting to learn to not get up in the middle of an episode, forcing me to pause the episode. So, he, he's actually waiting for the discussion, so I appreciate that. Anyway. So, yes, Bakugo has now figured out that Midoriya got his power from All Might, which is insane, you know? Now, he doesn't, like Midoriya said, he hasn't been as mean to him since Kamino, but I, I don't know, I feel like... If anything, that would piss him off the most, you know? It'd piss him off so much. 
but I don't know. We're definitely going to need to get more of that. We'll definitely need to get more of that, but... Oh, man. That's just crazy that he figured it out. Okay, so to kind of go into the notes, the first thing I wrote down is Meatball. Ugh. I'm glad that guy didn't win. Fucking Meatball. Meatball-ass Meatball. So, yeah. Um, that, it's such a freaky power, you know? And he's such... And, you know, he's one of those, you know, high horse kind of guys. You know, he thinks lower of Class 1A, which... You know, we've had that before with some other characters, but... Yeah, so, I don't know. He, he was kind of interesting, I guess, and the meatball thing was kind of interesting. Um, now, the most interesting thing, actually, was uh, Kaminari has learned how to focus his power. Well, not really focused his power, but he can... He does have a weapon, basically, to focus his power, which I like that. That uh, Power Loader and Hatsume created this thing. So what he has to do, specifically, is throw targets, and then he can shoot them, basically, with a focused electrical blast. That's pretty interesting. I actually like that. Which, hey, it's good, because, yeah, you know... Um, it's good because, you know, um, Kaminari, I mean, yeah, Kaminari hasn't really ever done too much fighting. The most he's done is, you know, the 1.3 million volts, but it's never really gotten him anywhere. Like, we haven't had any real fight with him, you know? So, um, so I do like that. I'm glad that he has a more focused method of attack. <coughs> Oh my god, excuse me. Whew. Um, I wrote down the anchor. I thought that was very clever. Again, I'm loving all the teamwork of this episode. Because, yeah, that was also the thing with uh, with Bakugo and Kaminari. That, you know, Bakugo initially did uh, a small AP shot instead of just an all-out explosion. Because he's trying not to hurt any of the other people there. And he's also not trying to hurt uh, Kaminari. And so Kaminari responds in kind by doing uh, the focus shot instead of just an indiscriminate charge, which would have blasted everyone there. So um, so I like that. And also to that, we also have the, uh, the anchor where Saro put his tape on specific rocks and then Uraraka levitated them so that they would come down and clasp all the, you know, basically trap all those... Uh, all those students there and then they could just go in and take them all out you know so i did like that that was pretty cool um and i do like you know no mercy you know they can't they can't do it and it's very interesting when he says like oh come on you guys are first years you you, you should let us do this you know you should let us pass and it's like sorry it's not how it works if this is you know if this is like your second or third time doing this test and you still can't pass Maybe you're not cut out to be a hero, man. So, and I do like, you know, when uh, the one guy from Shiketsu says, you know, the idea, even though, like, okay, with All Might retired, you would think that they would want to flood the streets with heroes. But what they're trying to do is weed out the riffraff, you know? Get rid of all the, you know, people who say they want to be heroes but can't live up to it. Which makes sense, you know, they're, they're basically, they're trying to get the best of the best now. Which is very interesting. Which is why the passing rate has differed so much, you know? Um, Bakugo and Deku, I wrote that down again. Bakugo has figured it out, which is pretty crazy. Um, we'll have to see how that really plays into their relationship, you know? I, how, does that... It makes you wonder if that changes Bakugo's view of All Might, you know? That... You know, because he views Deku as such a weakling, you would think that maybe he would think like, oh, well, why would All Might give you his power? But maybe then again, he might think, well, okay, All Might gave his power to Deku. Maybe that does mean something. I, I don't know. I like, we didn't get enough there, you know, um, other than Bakugo just saying like, oh, I see you're doing well with your borrowed power, which the way he says it and the fact that he says specifically borrowed power does sort of imply that, you know, I guess it could go both ways, but he also does sort of resent this at the same time, you know? 
So it'll be interesting to see if we get more of that. Uh, I imagine we will, so I, I want to see more of that in the future. Um, I can't believe that we actually did get all of Class 1A to pass the test. I'm... That's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. I could have sworn that, you know, we wouldn't get everyone, but we did. I like that. And I also like, again, the Class 1A teamwork, you know? This is, you know, what they said last episode. Class 1A is such a force to be reckoned with, you know? And I like that. Even Aoyama being like, okay, if if we keep going, we're not going to pass. Ida needs to pass. I will take the loss so that Ida will pass, you know? But in doing so, that allowed the rest of Class 1A to show up and help out. So I did like that. And also, okay, so... With Aoyama, we saw we saw his backstory a bit, where he's like, why am I different from everyone else? Okay. Is that just because he's French? Is that... I think that's it, actually, is the fact that he's French. Because, yeah, they have... I mean, first off, he has a French accent, you know? No, I, now, I don't know if Yuga Aoyama is a very French name. Ugh, I don't know. I... I took French for a year. I don't know if that is exactly a French name. Um, but yeah, so... So that's pretty interesting that, you know... Um, like, yeah, and I guess you could say, like... Okay, maybe you could take that a bunch of different ways. Like, why he is different. But honestly, yeah, I guess the main thing... The easiest thing to take away, why is he different from everyone else? He's French. And he, he's a French guy that lives in Japan. You know? So, I guess that's it, which is interesting. And and the other thing is, we, that's, all, that's pretty much it. That's all we get, you know? And and other than, you know, when Ida's like, no, you will be able to keep twinkling. Whatever that means. Like, what does that mean? I don't know. I kind of want, like, can we get a whole origin episode for Aoyama? I kind of want to know things, you know? I want to know about this guy because he's more, he's more than he lets on. I want to know, you know? I want origin episodes for everyone, but I'm now I'm curious. Now you got me curious about Aoyama, so so yeah, so I did like that though. That in his actual one heroic moment that he's had, basically the entire show is him ready to take the loss so that Ida can pass. I do like that. Um, okay, what was going on with uh, Hagakure? She did some sort of crazy friggin, like, light attack. Which is completely new. Like, I guess maybe that's her ultimate move. Warp Refraction. So basically... <laughs> okay, here's an interesting thing. Hagakure has a move that she can do? <laughs> I never thought she could. I thought it was just being invisible, but she actually has a a refraction, basically, uh, technique. <laughs> basically, a solar flare. Hagakure can do a solar flare. That is honestly pretty cool. So, I'm glad she actually has a move. Because, yeah, when it's like, oh, well, you know, you gotta really use your quirk and really develop it in crazy ways. And it's like, how much can she do that? I'm not really sure. So... So yeah, that was pretty cool. And then yeah, all of Class 1A passed Round 1, which is pretty cool. And we did actually... We finished Round 1, which is which is great. Um, so yeah. And now we are moving on to Round 2, which is a rescue mission. We're going to be rescuing civilians. Again, we don't really know the, the grading criteria on this one. Um, we don't have the grading criteria on this one. Um... So, I will be curious to see, like, if anyone's actually going to fail round two. Maybe, maybe not. We'll have to see. Um, but yeah, very, very cool. Love this episode. Really, really great episode. And I love them all, but still, this was a exceptionally great episode. And I'm very curious to see where we are going next time. So, that's pretty much it. With all that being said, I'm Alex from 7th Hour Films, and I will see you guys next time. Take care. 
Alright guys, thanks for watching this video. If you want to watch more of my My Hero Academia reactions, you can click on the playlist, you can subscribe if you haven't done that already, and be sure you hit that notification bell. You can support me on Patreon and follow me on social media, links below in the description. See you guys later.